Hey everyone, it's actually Jeb Bush, and today I have the one and only community lead of the Top Shot Discord and one of my favorite people in Top Shot, L Dumbo. So, Dumbo, thanks so much for taking the time to do this video with me. I really appreciate it. Uh, cheers, mate. I'm really excited to be here, to be honest. So, right off the bat, uh, full transparency, I asked you to do an interview at the beginning of August. And you said yes, to your credit. And four weeks ago. Oh, yeah, four weeks ago. And and I told no, 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 this is not this is not about you. I told Mike Zakarian of Team Hold, I told him I was like, dude, I'm gonna do an interview with Dumbo. I can't believe he agreed. Like, I know he's so busy and all that stuff. I told him like basically the same day that you agreed to it. Fast forward till now, Mike did a stream with you and I when I was researching, kind of getting ready again to do this interview, I realized that Mike's video with you is the first video on YouTube interviewing you. And I would have had that if I didn't tell Mike that, <laughs> hey, Dumbo might be down to do an interview. That's what. I definitely did a few interviews, but I guess maybe they're just not gone on YouTube. Yeah, maybe they're just on Twitch or something like that. Yeah, because I remember in that video you said that it like wasn't a face reveal or anything like that. So I just thought it was funny. I gave Mike about it. Where I was just like, damn it, you stole you stole my you stole my shine. <laughs> I, I'm just I swear there would have been one up there already, but I guess not. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. I was shocked. I cause I I just typed in like Dumbo interview, like top shot Dumbo, like was looking for anything. And all <laughs> I could find was that one video with Mike. And I was like, wow, like is he really like not have there are no other like interviews with him? That's kind of crazy. My, mate, Mike's a leech. Don't trust him. Don't I know, people. clearly, clearly. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they call him Mike Zucchini for a reason. Exactly. Everyone yeah. knows Zucchini's are leeches. It just yeah. it comes to mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, on, dude, on top of that, the whole interview with you, he was just, like, interrupting over and over. And I was like, dude, Mike, how about you – let Dumbo Zik carry on with his conversation. <laughs> Am I right? Like, I, I, I hadn't noticed, but now you said it, I'm going to, yeah, I felt that way. Yeah, I was really yeah. upset. Terrible interview, terrible interview. Yeah. No, yeah. I actually uh, really enjoyed it. Shout out to Mike. He's uh, Yeah, he shout out to Mike. Him. Mike is one of the best people in the space. Such a nice guy. So funny. I mean, really is one, the reason that I'm doing this in the first place. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> did you get started Mike. like after Mike? Is that what happened there? Yeah. So like I, I actually... I actually like discovered Top Shot right off a really bad breakup. And I discovered Team Hold pretty quickly and started watching them and stuff. And besides Team Hold, I was just like, oh, like, why don't I just make content? I have all this free time now. So I started, I started kind of doing it and then just started talking to Mike and becoming more like active and talking to Mike about stuff. And he was like, dude, like, yeah, do stuff, like send us videos and we'll post them on our channel and all that. And he would do, he's done videos with me and like I'd jump on their live streams and all that. And now it's kind of like this full blown like thing where it's become just yet another hobby on top of all these other hobbies that I have, <laughs> but I, it's been I, super fun. I do really like what you guys put out as like a, the team hold network. I don't know if you see it as a network, but I think it's yeah. awesome. I feel like you hit loads of like different, like some of the, some of the content is just proper funny and it's a bit of a meme. And then some of it is yeah. like a really good market breakdown, serious stuff. And you do like the whole spectrum. And I think that's really cool. Yeah, um, thanks. Yeah, don't no, I, I don't want Mike to like have it go to his head. Like, no, don't worry, I'll edit, I'll edit that part out <laughs> for sure. So really quick, like I said, there's not a ton of videos that people can just look up uh, talking to you and you're a pretty prominent me member in this Top Shot space, like as the community lead on the Discord and being involved in a lot of these other smaller like fan made discords where you kind of pop in and like answer questions and goof around and all that stuff like you're so great in the team hold discord it's always fun to see like your name pop up so what can you explain like to me like what your full like job entails like what what's your official title and like what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis and what are you involved in yeah of course um first of all jacob roham if you're watching this i don't mess around with the service it's pure business super super good don't worry about that um, very serious yeah, yeah always very serious yeah. super serious no there's no uh, room for jokes <laughs> no actually though like so i'm community manager which basically obviously as you touched on like a lot of that is being community facing dealing with the discord but you also know like you know like jacob's on the community team and jp and candy they're not so community facing but that's all mm -hmm. like part of the team like jp for example 
you you all have seen his work, but you know I not even realize it because he focuses on like the streams. So like when mm -hmm. you're watching the streams on like a pack opening or Jacob chatting with a player, that's like JP, like he's dealing with that. And then like, you know, like for example, the MB WNBA launch, that was all like Candy just carried the community team through that. Like she dealt with the influences, she dealt with the community input for the product side of things. Like she's absolutely amazing there. But like wow. what I do is I just go into Discord and I just deal with like, you know, the front lines so that we can work as a team so that, you know, when the community are talking about like Candy comes to me and she's like, hey, I'm seeing people talk about the collector score around WNBA. I do think we should address it. What are you seeing? And then I can take it back and be like, hey, these comments have happened in the Discord. This is what we're seeing. And I work with the likes of Brad and Mo and, and Rob and Zach and uh, Corey, who's joined as well, the community team. And we all come together to one, give like around the clock coverage so that whenever you step into our mm. community on Discord, there's always going to be someone on Top Shot team who can like take those questions and be there as part of it. But two, and the stuff you guys don't see so much is we relay what we see in the community. So, you know, if like people are complaining about an issue at logging into their accounts, we can actually react straight away and go into like maintenance right away or tell the engineers or tell the developers. And by doing that, we can have like a much better user experience because you don't have so many people like failed purchases or failed logins or whatever the issue is because we mm -hmm. can like get that in real time. So that's kind of what I do in that regard. But then like on a personal level, you know, I'm also quite involved with the Nine Lives Lounge. I work a lot with content creators in terms of like, you know, I try to be the go-between for like the devs and the engineers and content creators. So I work with them there. If they're like, hey, I want to have Jacob on as a guest, it's like, all right, well, you know, Jacob's DMs are ridiculously full. You're going to struggle yeah. there, but you can reach out to me and I can put that onto Jacob's plate and be like, hey, when you've got time. So just trying to be the go-between from like community to internal on a, a range of different areas. Um, and then now, as we're like built out the community team, part of what we're looking forward to doing in a, in the coming weeks, months, even over the next couple of years, to be honest, is just building in this infrastructure of like a, a content creator sort of network and having it so that if you join the community, there can be a, a better sort of onboarding experience to even join mm -hmm. the community. So part of that is work around collab land that some of you have seen, for example. And like, that's kind of what I do at the moment. It's a range of areas. I know it's a very vague and broad answer but that's because at top shot it changes so quickly and like one day i might be working on one project and then two days later that project's like put on pause or it's finished or it's moved on and we're doing something else and that's what's really exciting but it does mean that like every day does vary a little bit yeah i mean i would i would guess considering it's a startup and it's a pretty small company that's expanding rapidly like i'm assuming i'm assuming you've been there for a bit too like yeah 100 percent like like tomorrow, for example, I'll have a meeting with some of the big names at the company and that happens like on a weekly basis and I can go there and represent the, the community. And like, yeah, obviously, you know, the Dapper Labs are signing my checks, but like I yeah. do see myself as working for the community at the end of the day. So like it really can vary week to week what those issues are. But if there are mm. issues or even if it's not issues, if it's just like really good feedback, like the WNBA was so well embraced by our community, but there were like some complaints, but the complaints weren't about what WNBA was, it was like, hey, I'm confused. Like, why didn't I get a free moment? Why can't I have priority queue access? Yeah. And, and like, I get those complaints and like, we take them on, we note them down, we figure out where the feedback is legit, where it's just people wanting free stuff, et cetera. And then we can process that and pass it on to the teams. But like also passing on the fact that like WNBA was amazing. Let's carry on full steam with that because people love it. And so like, it's both, yeah. you know, speaking for the community to product and like internal team, but then also trying to help them when we're doing like a blog rollout, making sure we're there to provide comms. So yeah, definitely in that regard. Really cool. Okay. Awesome. So what did you do before top shot? What attracted you to top shot? Uh, and were you a top shot user before you started before they hired you? Yeah. So I, so I joined the platform like mid January as a collector. I, like within like an hour, I got the, you need to be KYC'd. I was like, yeah, I did. Like I probably deposited too much. And that was back when there was like a big delay. It was like six, seven days. As soon as I got my KYC through, just deposit, deposit, like every day hitting that max um, for like a week straight. Wow. Big, just went, like, I just loved it. I just fell in love with it. So I was like just selling everything else I had to like put money into it. And then I was, I got started doing notes on office hours. To give some context, I'm from the UK, but I live in Mexico. So it was an office hours that was like happening in like afternoon time for me that all my UK mates who had also got onto the platform weren't going to be about for. And they were mm. like, they'd also done similar where they just like went hard on it and they were really excited and they were like, all right, we're going to miss this. I was like, well, I'll take notes and share it. And then I was like, well, I may as well share these notes with the wider community. I did that. And then people were like, wow, those were awesome. Can you do that again? So I was like, 
why not? It's not a big deal. So I was taking notes. I did that for like a couple of months. And then Usman and Jacob, Usman, who used to be on the community team, um, yeah. moved on to like other stuff. And like, he still chats them all the time, to be honest. So they were like, hey, like I started t- chatting to them a little bit about it. And then after a couple of months, I like, do you want to join as a volunteer mod? Back when we had the mod program. And then after doing that, like, to be quite frank, when I was a volunteer mod, like I, I was probably more, a little bit rude, a little bit too, a little bit too intense, but I was quite happy to be like, hey, like, this is how the community feel right now. We need to address it. Um, yeah. And like at the end of the day, some of that I really respected was Jacob and the rest of the Dapper team were like, yeah, that's that's appreciated. Someone who just says it how it is. We actually want to talk about bringing you onto the team. And then they offered me a job. And that was back at the end of April as a like community rep. Did that for a few months and then started this month. They were like, oh, let's bring you up to a community manager and just a bit more hours, a bit more responsibility sort of thing. So that's kind of like my story. So yeah, um, wow. like short story. The short version is I was collector. Then I was a volunteer mod and now I'm on the team. Super, super, super cool. Another question that you kind of touched on a little. So you're from the UK. Were you into basketball be- while you were in the UK? Did you root for a specific team? Do you have a favorite player? Or like, when did that happen for you? I, I okay, I don't want to get fired here. I'm just not massively into basketball. Like I have, I'm a familiar with basketball. Like what okay. I find interesting about basketball is more like the individual stories. Like, um, yeah. Like that, I can't remember the name of it. That Netflix documentary is just incredible about the Jordan era, for example. Like, I, I love that. I love the, the, the last dance. Story. Yeah, the last dance. Like, I love yeah. that stuff um, more so than like actually watching game. Like, I do, I have, I have seen NBA. I'm not like that level of out of it, but like, yeah, I was way more attracted to Top Shot as the, the crypto side of collectibles and what hmm. I felt like, even without being a big NBA fan, I was like, this is clearly the future of NBA fandom. Why would you not want to get in this early? And I still feel that way now, to be honest. Like, yeah, I, I'm every time we do a pack release or when we released when we released WNBA moments and I can't collect them, I can't express how much it's like, oh, should I quit and just go and buy these moments? Like, it's very tempting. Should I go rogue? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, so for me, it was way more the crypto NFT side of it. And I wasn't like big into them before either. It was more just like I'd seen NFTs for a while as an observer. And this, mm-hmm. to me, was the first time where it, like, made sense. Like, this has mass appeal. This is a big brand name working in the NFT space. Like, mm-hmm. it's a no-brainer to me to get involved. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it, kind of the same thing for me. I mean, Top Shot was my first NFT, but it wasn't necessarily the first time I heard about NFT. But I was like, no, this makes so much sense to me as opposed to paying a couple hundred to a couple thousand dollars for a JPEG, you yeah. know? I was like, oh, no, like, I I get this. Like, this I'm super into. Like, growing up in L.A. County, growing up in Long Beach my entire life, like, the my first basketball memories are the Kobe Shaq three-peat. And, like, obviously, if that's your first basketball memories, like, you're hooked for life. Because yeah. it's a pretty great experience to, to have. And that's the thing. Like, either you come in for the NFT side of it, because in my opinion, no one else is even close to top shot in the NFT space, or you come into it for the basketball side of things, because in my opinion, no one else is this close to top shot in the basketball side of things. Like, people talk about like collectible cards, and it's like, yeah, that's mm. cool, but like, top shot just crushes it, in my opinion. I think they blow out of water. Um, so I, I do feel like there's mass appeal from both these groups. And like, talking about, you know, spending a couple of grand on a JPEG. It's funny because now I do that a lot more than I did before Top Shot, but that's because yeah. I think Top Shot's like raised the bar. Like this time last year, NFTs were just here's an image, like here's here's right. a little bit of utility or a little bit of gamification to it, but it's really just an image. Whereas like now every NFT project is like here's our roadmap, here's the utility we're going to try and bring, here's what we're going to try and do. Because like Top Shot has said, like we're taking people to the finals of the NBA for owning our yeah. NFT. Like step it up, you know what I mean? And I think it's it's amazing how much impact it has on the wider space for sure. Yeah. So I, I assumed like, oh, this will eventually happen with Top Shot. But when they just out of the blue announced that, I was like, wow, like this is happening way, way faster. And they are like, like taking it to like the max of like, just like, hey, this is what we can do. Like, this is just a taste. And this is like a once in a lifetime experience. And mm-hmm. even being at Summer League and like just so much of my experience was enhanced by top shot which is crazy because i didn't win the summer league contest or anything but i got to sit closer to the basketball courts because of the top shot section i got to meet a bunch of new people that i probably wouldn't have met if it wasn't for top shot i got a bunch of moments and was able to sell the duplicates to pay for my vegas trip we're in such the early stages and it's like wow like they are really really doing such an incredible job with this like 
utility aspect of it and like continuing to pump out like a high quality product and not water it down by any means. Yeah, Which fair really, enough. Really cool. Yeah, I, I think that's a really cool thing to hear from like a collector's point of view because I feel that way. But it's really nice to hear like someone on the other side, so to speak, to say that. I found myself getting involved with Top Shot more and more and more heavily because I was like, "Wow!" Like, there's a lot more to this than just some like YouTube video clips. <laughs> you know, I, it's so funny to me when people are like, "Oh, why don't you just go get it off YouTube?" I'm like. But like you could any any piece of content you could say that about like why don't you just go yeah. download a picture of Mona Lisa like it's a ridiculous well, I mean, I, comment. I have I have downloaded a picture of the Mona Lisa and I'm right now uh, a ref running from the international police. <laughs> so yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, I'm filming this in a secure location, so don't don't let them know where my IP <laughs> is. But yeah, so okay, this kind of leads perfect onto the next question I kind of wanted to ask because we've talked a lot about utility and how top shots kind of just still scratching the surface which is really crazy to think considering how much has like already happened in the last like month literally the last month which like it feels like it's been years but it has only been it like vegas was earlier this month which is like crazy but how involved are you in brainstorming like the utility of top shot and do you interact with like representatives of not just top shot like higher ups but also like NBA representatives and help kind of coordinate that stuff. Because obviously you're the guy who has his feet on the ground and who is hearing all these suggestions or he trying kind of, you have a, you have the best, the best sense of what everyone wants because you're having to interact with all these whining people all the time, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, oh, that's a lot of pressure though. Cause at the same time, like, let's be real here. We could promise everyone a Lamborghini and people would complain about what color it was. You know what I mean? Like you're never yeah. going to get people hundred percent. Wait, you guys haven't promised Lamborghini <laughs> yet? Not yet. Not yet. Who knows? Who knows? I thought I was going to get to turn my Giannis finals moment into a Lamborghini in five years. That's what yeah. everyone's been saying in the discord. <laughs> of course. That's how it's going to okay. work. Okay. Good. 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 No, but like, um, in terms of my direct interaction, it's not like my area. So Hmm. no like i don't really but like i could if 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 i if i'm like this idea needs to be taken to the nba i speak to the partnership team like we have a dedicated team of people that do that and like i can't express enough the level of like from top to bottom direct communication at dapper like Hmm. if i was like this needs to happen i could dm like the allen or the roham or arthur whoever it is who's a big name in the company like to literally be like this needs to happen i mean we have dedicated discussions and meetings where all we do is chat about not not necessarily i don't want to i don't want to put it in a box and say utility but like ideas be it utility be it product changes be it community outreach be it any of these things where we get together and we, we bring this stuff up and like it's not just me like jacob will be in there other community reps will be in there like on behalf of community and they will stop and say like okay what would community think about this what what is the community thinking if we did this you know and like it's i can't express enough how much like it's a part of the conversation even if i'm not the mouthpiece to the nba i'm definitely like the i'm as here as the community well, you have to stay. yeah 100 like 100 so um i think it's really exciting as well because it means if the community come together and has like a, a majority clear unanimous decision decide a certain thing Mm-hmm. To a certain extent, it will get implemented, or we can think about it. We can stop and be like, "Oh, that's a really good idea. Let's put it forward." You know? Yeah. So, um, so if you're watching this, I just want you to go to Discord, and I want you to message Dumbo and say, "I think a lot of us collectors really think we should get Lambos." <laughs> so, once enough of us message him, we will get Lambos airdrop to our Top Shot accounts. So. That's I how mean, it works, guys. You heard it here. If everyone, if enough people said Lamborghini partnership, I'm sure we could call Lamborghini, but you're not going to get a Lamborghini. I'll put that out there. But that, that's kind of what I mean is that, like, in terms of the, the influence and the reach that Top Shot has, it's mm-hmm. the sky's the limit. Like, literally, yeah. you know, we've got brands that want to work with us and we're picking and choosing. And it's like a really exciting situation to be in where it's like not what's best just because it's what's the most available. It's like what's, and that's why, like, it takes time is because we're picking what's best for us to work with for the community, for the platform, for the long term. Mm. And I think that's really exciting. That's, I mean, that's really great that you guys like have that foresight because like there are so many companies that jump at the chance to get certain, certain brands on board or stuff like that. But I think that at least for me, just looking from the outside in, it is very clear that that's the case. Once again, when going to Vegas and seeing like, the quality of the product that was like displayed there. Like 
I mean, I'm sure the summer league thing took months of planning, but we didn't know about it literally till almost summer league when they're like, Oh, we're going to have a booth. I was like, Oh boy, is this going to be like a mall kiosk where they're like, Hey, like, like scan your top into your top shot here and scan your credit card. But it was this full blown booth with like video screens and everything was so organized and polished. And that was so, so cool to see even, even like, the shirts like being on the chairs like like they are when you go to a, a game and they're giving out free shirts like little touches like that were really really incredible to see where it's like wow that we're still in beta like this is not this is not the peak top shots and like okay we did it guys like let, let's wrap it up here like they are just getting started and they're already pulling out things that i thought were like potentially years down the line which yeah. is so so encouraging to see. I mean, even even being on the inside, I'm still sat there like I can't believe this is happening like this year. Like I put my collector hat back on. I'm like, are we really doing this right now? <laughs> like the WNBA launch, we saw like I think two or three WNBA players in like a post game interview or whatever it was be asked by the reporter, "Are you excited to be on WNBA Top Shot?" And that's that's wild. Like we have it as part of the culture to a certain extent already, and yeah. we're still like not even like pushing that it's just happened organically you know yeah. and like yeah you couldn't go to summer league on those first few days and not see top shot and i no. I, I think like you know some of the community are like oh how many people signed up like how you know how many moments do you sell etc etc but they're forgetting like what we're doing right now what's happening is top shot is making that transition to be in like an almost inner circle of like the most niche nba top uh, nba fans to be in like mm -hmm. if you watch nba you know about top shot and i think that's gonna yeah. happen more and more over the coming months and years yeah, well, it's so crazy. I was like, I saw this clip of ESPN where there's a bunch of people with Top Shot shirts on. And I was like, yeah, wow, they got an ESPN already. Like, whoever did that should really be compensated because they really that's that's so much like free advertisement. Like, it's incredible. Yeah, and it's it's you know that's the first time I see a world. I don't know when it is, but I see a world where like the ESPN are constantly talking about Top Shot. You know, yeah, I just, I just see that happening. There's a very like real potential that there's a top shot section in espn shows like years down the line where they're like okay like let's go to mike zakarian from espn and he's going to talk about top shot for like 10 minutes like every day and just saying like hey uh jason tatum just put up 50 points and as we can see top shot just released a moment today for it and it's already like sitting at this here's the circulation count here's the volume being sold like there's there's so much they could do with it and i mean espn instead of playing the same like show over and over and over again i'm sure they love some like new content like that and once again like you said it's already permeating the culture and we're like we're still in beta so what what does that look like when we get to like it being a real staple in the nba because the, the NBA is clearly very behind this. They're not, Adam Silver's not going to be like, oh, let's give it a shot. Oh, it didn't work. Like, oh, well. Like, if if they partnered with you guys, like, they very clearly believe in this and are going to do what it takes to help you guys and enable you guys to make this work. And so, I mean, that's one thing that I'm so excited about is like, we have like not even scratched the surface. And it, you can tell me if I'm wrong or say no comment or whatever. But in my opinion, I feel like, as a programmer from a programmer's aspect there's just so much you guys want to do but like it takes time to code all these projects and test them and make sure everything runs smoothly and that's the thing that's holding you back is like you're like yeah we can't just release tickets and run it back and all this stuff at once because like believe it or not we have to develop it and it that takes time and resources like we can't just like pop all this stuff out and you guys still are like the speed at which things are coming out and like the polish on them and just the fact that so rarely I see like an error that like I'm like oh god that's like a coding error like that's obviously a piece of code that wasn't tested uh so uh, once again I'm assuming you have to say no comment on this but the Donovan Mitchell like reward with the whole serial number thing I saw that and I was like that's probably a piece of code in their algorithm that accidentally didn't get tested because they maybe they're testing with a date string that they're putting into a seed for the randomizer and they didn't test 2020 accounts or something like that and they didn't realize what that would do but besides that moment and i don't even know that i could be completely wrong there but that's just that's just the way i see it but 
besides that, you guys are pumping stuff out constantly and it is polished. It looks incredible. Like aesthetically, it's super great. It looks very futuristic. Like I think a lot of people complain about Top Shopping, like, oh yeah, they're in beta still, blah, blah, blah. Like they're not really in beta. Cause everything looks like it's not beta. Like everything looks so good and runs so smoothly when you guys are so young and like it's it's incredible. It's truly incredible the speed and the like accuracy that stuff is put out and it works. Yeah. Um, okay. So a few things on the Donovan Mitchell, I will say no comment only because like, I don't fully understand it. Like it was mm -hmm. a little while ago and the technical stuff goes over my head. Okay. Um, so Makes I don't sense. want to say the wrong thing, but I, I think you hit the nail on the head to a certain degree, but I did want to, I want to add like a little edit, like definitely like there's a lot going on. There's always stuff coming and going like, like the WNBA was in a way out of nowhere, like not even yeah. Detective Doucette at first mint really knew that was coming, even though he had he had some suspicions, but like he's no been really he's been losing it. his touch lately. I'm hey, just he, like I don't know, man. Cats, like two days before the lounge. And like we launched it like two days before International Cat Day. I mean, like the, the breadcrumbs were there. Like, I'm disappointed at him for it sure. was so <laughs> obvious. Like it's as so I just obvious. was like, eh, I don't really have the money to do it. Like but I know it's coming on this specific day. So I'm I'm just gonna like I thought everyone knew. I yeah, I I I'm pretty sure everyone did except Luke, to be honest, at this point. Like first mint behind yeah. the times for sure. But like yeah. um in terms of when you say like, oh, it's just a coding aspect or a developing aspect, it's not really just that because mm -hmm. there's so many different things. So let's take the WNBA as a concept here. Like because of the way it's on the platform, it's not like a huge add-on from a development point of view, but we mm -hmm. have to make sure that like from a community perspective, from an economy perspective, from just like an MBA timeframe perspective, we launch it at the right time. So let's mm -hmm. just say hypothetically, products and development wise, that feature is ready to launch when the finals are happening. We don't want to launch a new feature like that's separate from the finals during yeah. the final. You know what I mean? So it's like the timings there are really important. And that's where like our economist is a really great voice to be like, hey, this feature might be ready, but like it makes way more sense to wait, even if it's just a week or a few days or launch it with this other feature. Like we can't launch this until this is ready, those sort of things. So like mm -hmm. it's not always necessarily just a development bottleneck. It's more just like we don't want to rush. We're never going to launch something just because it's ready. We're always going to mm -hmm. be like, okay, like, is this good to go? Like a, another example is we now have like average list price or average sales price on the site. Yeah. Right? And now that, that feels like it's been around for ages, but it is still kind of new. And like yeah. that was ready before we launched it, but we, we sat and we were like, is this okay? So we did mm -hmm. a little bit of light feedback. Like I, I kind of, without making it clear what I was asking people, I was like in some chats, we collect nothing like no market moving information or anything like that. Just saying to people like, Hey, what do you think about a few ideas? I would list like five or six. One of them would be average listing. Like people like yourself in a chat like this, just sort of get some general feedback and make sure like one, the community response is going to be good. And it's like, cool. Now yeah. we take it to the econo economist. Like, is it going to be okay for economics? And then it's like, okay, like the end. And that's all on top of the engineering development work being done. So I, I think mm -hmm. maybe people think like, oh, just make a new feature and roll it out. But we think like make a new feature, make sure it fits and then roll it out. You know, it's like there's a multi-part process for sure. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, that makes sense too, because I mean, from like a, a, a very simple standpoint, just cause you have a bunch of challenges ready, you don't want to release them all at once. Like you yeah. take your time with each challenge. So that's okay. I mean, that's great to hear once again, that there's so much thought, but behind every single action and you guys understand that every single thing affects every other single thing that's already in that ecosystem. So yeah, exactly. One thing is I would imagine like you guys are a pretty new company. Like I said, you're pumping out so much new stuff. You're adding all these new features and moments, onboarding the WNBA recently, doing these real life utility things. I know that, like I said, we found out about Summer League a couple of days before it happened. I know that that had to take like months of planning. I would imagine there are so many people working a lot of extra hours who are so passionate about Top Shot and they're doing all this work behind the scenes. And I think there's, I think a lot of Top Shot users could be stereotyped very fairly as incredibly impatient. When, when packs, when, when do we get tickets? When do we get run it back? People hounding Jacob. I'm sure you get hounded from people about different things where that you don't have any control over. I was just wondering maybe if you could kind of pull back the curtain a little and just explain like what all these people 
do like on a day-to-day -day basis, like how much work they put in to make Top Shot this great experience for us. Because I think if more people heard that, they'd be a little more forgiving and not so like ready to jump down Top Shot's throats whenever like some silly mistake is made, which they immediately correct. They're like, no, okay, guys, we'll fix it. Like, hey, we're still in beta. We're figuring this out. And people act like they just like, stole like their firstborn child from them it's like dude calm down like we're in beta and you are so early here but yeah people are just so impatient and I'm just wondering if you could expound upon that a bit yeah i i think it's it's fair to say to an extent but i i don't mind it i'll be completely frank like because the impatience it, like if you look at the people that are being impatient they're not like someone who's just joined the site and then yeah. someone like who owns like 10 moments and they want to get 20 moments they're people that are, like have like a decent collection or they've been here since like for like months or whatever and and these people are impatient because they're passionate and i love yeah. it because it means yeah if we if we screw up they come at us but i don't mind that because one it keeps it on, keeps us honest two it means we are like we have to learn from this we can't slip up and like brush it under the rug it's like no we have to fix it we have to fix it properly and we have to make sure it doesn't happen again you know we mm -hmm. have we have to because the community won't let us and i know maybe this isn't what like the rest of the team want to have me saying but like i really appreciate it because the more honest we are kept the better a product we are you know what i mean and like mm -hmm. if you look at the people that do you know dm me and they're a bit upset about a certain feature change or a certain tweak like the fact that we can like minorly tweak collect score values of like 20 moments on a platform with many moments and people are like hey this affects this this and this like can we talk about it I love that because it shows the level of sort of wider awareness people have. Like if we do something that maybe is confusing for new collectors, people that have, are signing up to the site, the established community, people that have been around for months still get upset by it. Not maybe upset on the right word, but they still want to talk about it. And yeah. that shows that like people really see this as like, we're a big community here. So like, if you do wrong by that person, you've done wrong by all of us. And that's where we have to be like, let's do right by that person. Let's do right by every single collector. And so that's why I think like, yeah, it makes the job a little bit spicy, a little bit <laughs> exciting, let's say, but it, it makes it a better job overall. And um, yeah, so I don't mind the impatience. Uh, like but people, but people at Top Shot work very hard, right? Like there's so many hours and so much behind the scenes that we don't see that like should be appreciated and vocalized more by people in the Top Shot community, right? Like, yeah, I you're, mean, you're not telling us to be more impatient like let's let's make yeah, that very yeah, clear sure. like for guys sure. this is not a this is not a pass to go harass people on twitter please do not do that. yeah I, that's what i would say it's like what it comes down to is when people want to have these conversations the one the people the collectors that do it in the polite constructive and like formal way let's say like they, they don't just say this is sucks when's packs to say hey i've noticed we've not had a pack release for this amount of time this doesn't fit the norm this doesn't fit the cadence we've gotten used to can we talk about it they're the sort of comments and conversations that like not only get me wanting to respond but they're going to get like the roham and the jacobs coming in to be like hey let's actually have a really open chat about it um i think a great example when i sort of alluded to earlier is the WNBA collect score moments the collect mm -hmm. score value of the WNBA moments like yeah yeah they came out in line with this series it didn't it didn't feel like that was right because this is a new a whole new launch of a, of a let's call it a product within yeah. the site and so like yeah we do need to address that and we were having those conversations and the community started having that conversation as well and we weren't like no no let's dismiss it we were like okay let's let's talk about it let's bring it in let's have a uh a internal team talk to community conversation and figure out where the solution is here and so like i think that will carry on happening so long as the people that are raising their voices are doing it in the right way the right channels mm -hmm. you know like i'll be honest if you want to come and say something like you're really upset you're going to get a better response if you dm me than if you like try and blow up twitter at me because i'm like i can't respond if you get really upset on twitter because that encourages it but if you get upset my yeah. dms i'm happy to respond and we can talk it out and like yeah I, I would i don't want people to get impatient but i definitely don't want people to feel like this is a closed door like dms are always open 24 7 just slide in if you've got something that you feel is really important to say you know okay yeah so to dive down that uh that rabbit hole real quick about the the cs change and we can cut this if you don't like there's something you can't say or something like that but i was someone this morning who was pretty vocal about my disappointment in the change not because i don't think the moment should be worth a lot i i said from the get-go they should have probably been worth 18 collector score points so because it's series one of the WNBA, just like series one of the NBA is 18 collector score points. And I get that there's like 
optics where it's like, oh, why are the NBA moments worth so much more than the WNBA moments and stuff like that? But it did rub me kind of the wrong way where you guys dropped. It was like, oh, two collector score points for the WNBA, but now we're just going to change it. Like we, we can kind of change things whenever we want. Uh, and we're just going to go ahead and change it. And obviously I know that there's a lot of conversation that happens behind the scenes. This wasn't one person reading a post on Twitter and being like, Oh my gosh, like we have to change it. But it did seem extremely reactionary as opposed to like you guys even coming out and defending why you chose two collector score points or explaining better why the WNBA should be worth more as opposed to just being like, Oh, it's like a big deal. And this is, this is some of the stuff I speculated on. So feel free to tell me I'm being an idiot here or not like not seeing it from like the perspective that you obviously do. But one of the things I said was like, yeah, like it makes sense. Like if you're a new user who joined top shot for the WNBA, you shouldn't have to get straight armed and forced into buying NBA moments in order to have a good collector score. So like if you're just a WNBA fan, like I'm just an NBA fan. I'm excited about these WNBA moments. I've got I've got a couple, but I'm I'm that's not my focus. So if you're a WNBA fan, you shouldn't be like, "Oh, I'm going to collect the whole set. Why are is my collector score so low still when I've invested like a lot personally, whether money or time or like thought into into this new this new platform." And obviously that would coincide with possible issues with being eligible for the playoff packs and the finals packs for the WNBA. And you wouldn't want to burn a new user by being like, Hey, I know you're really excited, but uh, you can't have access to this yet because you know, you haven't earned it. Like your collector score isn't high enough, even though you have all the WNBA moments. Yeah. I mean, oh, so it's, it's a complex issue because yeah, you know, I, I agree with the, the point of like changing it mid series or mid season. Like, Oh, I don't know how I feel about that, but like, I don't want to step on anyone's toes or upset anyone here, but I think we need to step back and remember like when we launched collector score, how it looked compared to how it looks now, because we've yeah. tweaked it and changed it. And I do personally feel we've always said like collector score is this like work in progress, trying to make it, you know, the best it can be for all mm -hmm. collectors. Now I appreciate that when we do a change like this, people are like, well, could you change this in this moment mid series? It's like, no, like that's not the precedent we're trying to set here, but this yeah. is a whole new product on the platform this isn't just oh this is a new set this is a whole new sport we're bringing to top shot so if Correct. we feel like the collector score isn't right it makes sense to change it now that doesn't mean that collector score for other moments can't change in the future but we will always try to be considerate of how we do it like no one on the team is okay with anything that might be like a rug pool of like oh I've reduced the collector score points no one wants to do that like yeah the board. What and you guys have made that really clear yeah, exactly. But what we do want to do is, like you say, we want to make it so you can be a, a someone who's a collector of just WNBA moments and still have a decent collector score. Like, that seems like a no-brainer. Obviously, as there's not a ton of WNBA moments out right now, there's not like all the team sets out yet, there's not a bunch of sets you can collect for the bonuses, a WNBA drop will have to account for that in some way because, like... Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense to say you have to collect NBA moments to purchase more WNBA moments. So I don't think it that 100%. makes sense to anyone. One thing we do there is we just adjust it by saying, okay, let's just increase WNBA collect score points. And I, I don't think our communication was necessarily lacking. It's just like we don't want you know think about it like this: if you sign up, you don't want to see like controversy or big discussion around it. You just want to enjoy collecting those moments. So like yes. we we have faith that our our collector base, our community can see both sides and we can say, hey, this is this is what we're doing. This is what we're saying. Here's, here's like the reason why we touched on it. Here's the changes. And as we've seen today, there might be people like yourself who were a little bit vocal about it. No yeah. one was really against the core idea. And I just want to say like a little bit off topic, but I loved seeing that. I love seeing that there was no one coming out like, oh, this is unfair, et cetera, et cetera. Everyone got it. The, the issues we're talking about are these like potential issues of will this change? How will collectible moments work again in the future? And, you know, I wouldn't worry about that personally because this is a very niche one-off situation. Does that yeah. mean that your collectible moments might change in the future? I guess in theory, yeah, but we would always do that in a really tactical thought-out way because, you mm -hmm. know, we have to create a collect score system that works for multiple years and who knows what happens in a year, two years, five years' time, but we don't want to have like a a treadmill where it's a, an 
always increasing collectible value because then new users will always struggle. So we have to balance, like you sign up to the site, you can start collecting those moments. And one of the ways we've done that, for example, is the tiered collector drop, the tiered pack drop, where yeah. it's like different collectors will drop. So like stuff like that, I, I feel shows that we're really considerate of all these different aspects. Um, oh, I definitely agree. A hundred percent, which is why I kind of was a little weirded out by this. Cause so I guess my follow-up question would be, why wasn't it, why wasn't there a higher collector score from the get go? Like why wasn't before the release, why wasn't it brought up that, Hey, this is a big deal. This is the first time we're dropping WNBA. These collector score moments should be higher, obviously, cause it's the first series of WNBA. And my, my speculation behind that was, Oh, you guys determine mint, things like mint count and just collector score via algorithms at this point uh based on like user maybe like marketplace volume things like that so you can be like all right let's not create bottlenecks let's not push these moments too high let's not keep them too low we want to make them accessible to all new users all this stuff but i mean if you guys decide collector score like in a discussion then obviously like my whole issue it, it changes a lot because then i'm like oh yeah that totally makes sense that they saw the mistake and and fix it it's a bummer that it didn't get brought up during the meeting because i think it would have been really important to say like hey like these, this is really important to the WNBA, to us to top shot and like we we want you to know that we value these as much as we value series one because this is series one top shot debuts of some of these crazy good WNBA players like ionesca and uh Tarasi, I think that's how you say it. I, I'm still learning my WNBA. <laughs> but man, I can hardly say like NBA players' names. To be fair, yeah. <laughs> look, at the end of the day, as we said in the blog today, it, it was just a bit of an oversight, and that hmm. isn't necessarily like an okay or acceptable reason. But if I'm being completely frank, it's because the level of excitement we had around WNBA was like these moments and these players. Like you saw, so many WNBA players are like getting involved. Like we did some yeah. spaces today with like, multiple so players, cool. and so like. It's very really hard for us to step back and be like, oh, what about collector score because of all this excitement? And I think it's a really big learning for us as a sort of company, as a team. Like we have to remember some of these core fundamentals and not get too lost in the excitement. And like like the blog said it, it was a bit of an oversight. And hmm. one that we flagged and worked on even before we rolled out the update to figure out like what's the solution here? Like how do we make this right without it being unfair? And I do personally feel like our resolution was on the mark. So long as like we make it clear to the community, as we will continue to do, collect score updates are always going to be communicated, and they're always going to be done in a way that accounts for like what people are currently holding. You know, like yeah, the, the, and I the mean, Economist is heavily involved in those discussions. To put it that way, you know, yeah, makes sense. And yeah, I mean, I was very much agreed with this solution, but I like there was someone that had brought it up in on Twitter that I kind of had pushed back on the day before. He's like, yeah, why is this not like this? I was like, well, Top Shot, like consistency is very important. And the timing's kind of unfortunate, but it seems that Top Shot's just making it clear that common moments are common, rare moments are rare, uh, legendary moments are legendary. And unfortunately, the WNBA came out after they made that decision going forward. So, and I was like, you know what? Like, I respect that decision because consistency is super important and users knowing what to expect. And like you said, you guys have done such a good job at never rug pulling a, like users and all. And if anything, just being like, hey, we didn't really see that coming, so we're not going to take that away. But moving forward, that's not going to be there. Yeah, and it's like it's difficult with the WNBA specifically in the sense that like the, the season of the WNBA like is different to the NBA season, right? So yeah. we already said Series 2 NBA finishes after the finals, and then we have this like, okay, Series 3 starts next season but WNBA season is kind of in that middle so it's like try it is just a it's just difficult in terms of like there's a year of events here we yeah. like, took our series to be on the NBA season but we don't want WNBA to feel like it's not also an amazing se season so like I think, yeah I, d I don't know how we look in the future for like the next year for example but I do think in this case it does make a lot of sense to go back and it's just a shame we didn't see that before it went live in products, to be honest. Oh okay, yeah, I mean that's that's great to hear, and yeah, I'm sure I'm sure like you guys are still in beta at the end of the day, and every everything's a learning process. Yeah, yeah like yeah. I again, not to pat ourselves in the back, but I do feel like the WNBA launch was just amazing overall, and yeah, these sort of like 
bumps and issues we ran into have all been fixed or are fixable, which is really awesome. Like, I don't think this would be a continued discussion in even a couple of weeks' time. Um, no, because I, people will realize I, like this is a one-off situation sort of thing. And no, I mean, you got me. Never, Like I said, never watched a WNBA game. Do not know. I knew Sabrina Ionesca because of Kobe and like her close connection with him uh, and like how she spoke at his funeral and stuff. But I did not know any WNBA players or anything like that. And this whole rollout got me excited about the WNBA where I'm learning these players' names and watching their their moments. And like I'm like, oh, maybe, I don't know, maybe if I have time, I will catch like a WNBA game. Or maybe I'll watch the playoffs at the very least and we'll see what goes from there. Uh, and I think that's one thing that's really cool about Top Shot is we've seen, and I got to give credit to, to Mike about this because he was very super pro WNBA and got a lot of pushback from people at first. And he was like, look, guys, like there was a bunch of crypto nerds who came into Top Shot not knowing anything about basketball. And now they all watch basketball. <laughs> You're telling me that this isn't going to like encourage people to watch the WNBA and get excited about the WNBA. And I mean, I think he's for sure right about that. And it's really exciting to see, like you said, all these WNBA players just organically like tweeting about it and them getting just as excited about it as well. Like you said, in terms of people getting into NBA from MNFT, I think we will see the same with WNBA. I think we're seeing it already. But what's really awesome is there's some voices that were already on the platform of like female collectors who I maybe just like spoke to and DM a little bit before when they were like asking some account questions. And now mm -hmm. they're like proudly on Twitter being like, I'm so happy to see these moments. And like, the, the embracing of this community is awesome. And I think it's probably, it surprised me. I think it surprised a lot of potential observers of like a, taking a group of a male dominated environment, generally yeah. speaking of NFTs combined with NBA, again, quite male dominated fan base and introducing a more female dominated fan base. And it just going well, like, yes, there's always going to be some like trolls and negativity, but I would say it's in the minority and I like strong minority. I mean like less than 1%. Yeah. And the way like, I've been tagged to like, hey, can you deal with this guy? And before I even managed to like ban the guy from the Discord or kick him or tempt you in whatever it is, so many people in the community are like, that's not cool. You can't say that. You can't say that. We didn't get out. We'll get like, and it's like, it's insane. Like how self pleased this community have been has got me really excited for what happens in the next few months. And that leads to what you were saying about people watching the WNBA. I feel like it's already happening and I we aren't even pushing it. People are just like, yeah, I want to watch it. I want to find out what's going on here. And it's like, yeah. it's great because for the next couple of months, NBA's in the off season, WNBA's playing. Like it's awesome that we can start talking about it and start watching it as a community for sure. Yeah, yeah. And if you like basketball and like you said, WNBA NBA is not on, like why not watch some WNBA instead of watching that highlight reel of LeBron for the 70th time on YouTube for free. So <laughs> put it in a showcase, mate. You can watch it back to back. You go that's true. That's true. It's a much cleaner transition. So when you guys when you created the Nine Lives Lounge, and I know that you are the person that kind of spearheaded that. I know there's a lot of people behind the scenes that are all helping with that. So want to give them credit as well. But you're definitely the front facing person of the Nine Lives Lounge. When I hear about the Nine Lives Lounge, I usually hear about Luke as well. I don't just hear about things that happen in it i'm like they're like yeah and dumbo had to deal with this or dumbo like said this or something like that so one thing that's been really interesting that i've kind of just kind of been sitting back and observing is now obviously to get in the nine line lounge you have to have 30 of 30 cool cats that's the only way to have access to it and this started to get a lot of people thinking like oh i wonder like are they going to create a discord for the hustle and sh the hustle and show set? Are they going to create a discord for the, the scene star set? Are they going to create different discords for ha collecting like an entire team? Like, are, are we going to get ex exclusive access to all this stuff? Like based on our collections. And while I think obviously there will be utility around stuff like that in the future, it does concern me as a user that, this this system and this idea that's kind of permeated the community in like the recent times since like the nine live lounge blew up and ever it's been such a great success i would hate to see top shot become kind of a class system where it's the the haves and the have nots it's like hey if you if you can drop like 10k on this set like you instantly are in this like exclusive group. But you know, if you're really passionate about Top Shot and you love Top Shot, and maybe you're like a diehard Laker fan or a diehard Bucks fan or something like that, but maybe you really can't afford to just 
drop a ton of money on the whole Bucks team set. I would want to make sure that those people that are passionate have just as much access and feel just as included in the community and with other Bucks fans and stuff like that as the person who can afford to just force themselves into whatever like sub community gets created. Cause we've seen some of these discords. Like I know I, I completed the hustle and show set. And when I did, someone replied to my uh, Twitter and was like, Oh, you should join the discord. And I said, piss off. Like, no, <laughs> um, I have, I don't have time for that. And I like love the discord. I love the team hold discord. And like the fact that we have people in there who are whales and like have dropped, incredible amounts or have like accounts that are worth so much and there are people in there who have their accounts are worth like 50 to 70 dollars but they are just as important in the community as the whales and like the what they contribute is so great and just the conversation and passion from the whole spectrum is like so so valuable where if i have a question about maybe a higher end higher end moment that i'm looking at the the whales or Mike, who's basically a whale at this point, will will jump in and be like, "Hey, like I've I've been watching that because I've actually owned it for a while and give me something." But if I want to talk about the floor, which is kind of my specialty, the series two floor, I've really put my stamp on series two in general, series two commons. So when I want to talk about that, there's a there's a bunch of people too who are like, "Yeah, like I that's what I've been looking at. I really can't afford to go and drop." 5k on a luca top shot debut but i can't afford to buy this this john collins dunk on Embiid, which is going for like 30 dollars right now and it seems really undervalued considering this dunk was such an iconic dunk and in the playoffs and he wore the shirt after it and all that stuff so how how does that look in the future where you are rewarding users for collecting and holding sets and stuff like that but also not creating this exclusive gated system where it's basically like it ends up with you either got an early or you have a lot of money and otherwise you're kind of out of luck definitely a few things i want to touch on here i mean first of all i love when you're saying like every, every collector is equal in terms of their their input there like i strongly agree be it like a whale who owns a thousand plus moments or be it like a guy who's got 10 moments if they've got good ideas like that's awesome and with the WNBA yeah. with all these new collectors coming in we're seeing people that are just getting to the platform but giving great feedback and that's amazing from like a whole new perspective yeah um, you know like but at the end of the day at the same time those people that have the bigger collections that maybe could have put more money in or they got an early or whatever they tend to pay more attention to it and that's just kind of what you should expect if you put ten thousand dollars or if you put twenty dollars like there's one group of people who are going to probably pay more attention that, you know, but at the same time, like there's certain big name collectors who I DM with almost daily because they have great feedback, great input. And they help say, like they help suggest, I couldn't tell you the collection values off the bat for all of them. Some of them I know are big, some are small. It doesn't matter if they've got great input, you know? So mm -hmm. I just want to say that first of all, um, I do, I do definitely appreciate where you're coming from in terms of like, we don't want to be a class system, like 100% agree. But as you say, like the NLL so far, we're still like in the first month. It's been awesome. I'm really excited to see what happens with it in the coming months. Like, and you know, so many people are working on it behind the scenes that wouldn't really be something that's scalable for like all these other groups for sure. Even if we decided we want to second of all, like, the NLL is the, the the cream of the crop. So I don't think we have yeah. to worry about there being anything else like that. They haven't just got one chat channel. They've got like a whole group and there's a whole discussion there and there's all these perks. I do think it's really cool though to be able to explore. And I'm not saying it'll be team sets or, or, or like normal sets. I'm not saying what it will be, but to explore something around the idea of like, you own these moments, you get access to this. And it could be as simple. And this is something that I said, I want to stop rolling out. You can't access the main Discord chat channels if you don't at least own a few moments. And the yeah. idea here is it's not like super exclusive. It's like buy a couple of packs and, you know, you sign up to the platform, you get two packs pretty much straight away. As long as you have like a hundred collectors or et cetera, like we're not making it difficult, but we're making it so you can't just be in our discord chat into the community. If you don't own moments, because yeah. that way we, we, we are gating the community, but in a way that makes sense, you want to chat to the collectors. Once yeah. we implement that, I do personally like the idea of being able to say, Hey, you have these moments, which mean you're like a fan of this team. Come and chat to them other collectors that have these moments and that are therefore fans of this team but it's super important to myself and the rest of the team that we don't make this like gated by a high number like a high buy-in um and yeah. i think that like figuring that out is part of the process of doing it i i do think there's a world where we say you know maybe it's like we do a challenge and you hold if you hold those challenge moments 
you get access to a chat channel to talk about that challenge for like the week that it's running. Like that makes sense. Mm. And even if it's a yeah. live buy-in, it means you're talking to people that are, are doing the same journey as you. And I think that's yeah. a really exciting thing we could do, like these temporary pop-up channels based around moment ownership, but not in the same way of Nine Lives Lounge as like a permanent thing that's going to have all these perks and bonuses. So I do think that it will happen and it will be like a fun experiment that we do within the community on Discord. But I, mm -hmm. I'm super conscious of everything you've said. And the idea is to be like, okay, it might literally only benefit like these people holding these moments, but we mm -hmm. would do it one across a broad range in different ways. And two, it would benefit the wider community because, hey, maybe the Lakers are playing tonight, right? Let's say it's series three, Lakers are playing the books and everyone's talking about it. Well, what if we could make it so that Lakers fans and books fans had their own channel to chat about it? It would actually yeah. help the rest of the community chat about other stuff with anyone chat about it. It would help Lakers fans meet and talk to other Lakers fans. And it would just create this really cool atmosphere of like Top Shot is part of the fandom experience. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm going to collect those moments so I can meet other fans during that game, you know? Yeah, exactly. And I think one thing to, I know I said a lot there, but one thing to kind of point out just to your, to your point is once again, going to summer league, there was a top shot section, and the only the only rule was you had to be a top shot collector to sit in there. They didn't check my account value. They didn't check how many moments I had or when I joined the platform. All that mattered was that I was a top shot collector. And I talked to a bunch of other top shot collectors and had incredible, like great conversations and enjoyed the game so much more because of it. And I never at once asked them, like, hey, like, what's your account value, by the way? Like, when did you join? Like like all this other, it's like, cause that didn't matter. Like what mattered was we were there cause we love basketball first of all. And then we love top shot. And that's obviously a great starting point to leading on to further conversations beyond that. And then, I mean, I also got the, why do you have a bear suit in Vegas uh, question quite a bit too. So that also led to some great conversation. Yeah. And, and that's what we want to do is, is taking that concept and, and doing it like virtually, so to speak, like yeah. not too cliche, but doing that in discord where it's a fun way that makes sense. And, you know, it's going to be a slow rollout. If it's not working, we'll retract and we'll change it like for sure. Um, and I think that when we look at like the nine lives lounge, it will only actually benefit that group because when people see how, okay, yeah, just an exclusive chat room doesn't sound that great. But when you realize it's a great way to talk to like-minded people, like you have in fan-made discourse, like Team Hold, there are like-minded people regardless of collection size or budget. Yeah. And so like doing that in our own Discord where you can meet those like-minded people for whatever reason will only make people more excited for like, oh, I could actually buy into the top tier version of this, i.e. the Nine Lives Lounge. But I don't think we'll want to have, like maybe it's like a ladder system, maybe there's different variations, but I don't think we're going to see it go like higher than what we already have. We're just going to try and do more exciting variations with it. Like, I think there's a lot of potential with it. I mean, imagine like long, long term where NBA players are so ingrained in this community and part of this platform. And we could say, oh, you know what? Like Josh Hart's going to jump in Discord. Anyone owning 10 Josh Hart moments, you get access to the channel to chat to him right now. Like just like that. Guys, you heard him collect Josh Hart moments. <laughs> they're they're going up. <laughs> I mean, I was trying to use a name that was like someone we know where yeah. it's reasonable, but like yeah, yeah, yeah. that is very much just off my brain, like the top of my head, speculating <laughs> on like where we could be taking this in a really exciting way that you know amp like amplifies and shows what it means to say we're going to make collab land a part of our community in a really prominent and fun way. But it's also yeah. long term. It's also a slow rollout. It's also like let's see how it goes, sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's great to hear because yeah, it it does have so much potential, but it is something that is complex and definitely has to be approached very carefully because it could it could result in undesirable like results that maybe even weren't foreseen. So I'm once again just glad to hear that like there are thoughts around this and you guys aren't rushing things and like really making sure that everything that's released is released at the right time and for the right reasons, which is so great to hear. So before I let you go, I have to know what is your biggest discord horror story? What is, what is the moment that just made you question like, gosh, do I want to, do I, do I want to stay here? Like, can I deal with someone like this again? Um, what's, what's taking years off your life, Dumbo? Uh, just talking to you, mate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Shut <laughs> uh no honestly like uh oh, i don't want to like have anyone try and test this but like it doesn't really bother me too much um like 
because you know I, I want to help people i want i want people to have a good time i want people to enjoy it and like, i feel like that's part of my role that's how i see my role right so if someone's mm-hmm. upset i want to take the time to deal with it so like if someone gets upset at me and they come at me like if i can't resolve it i'll pass it on if they're upset and it's irrational i just kind of find it like a little bit funny like to come and have a go at me because i've muted you for a day is a little bit ridiculous like someone someone trying to like break terms of service i mute them for three days and they blow up my dms i'm like it's kind of funny, mate, because I'm just I'm an elephant avatar on a Discord server. <laughs> and you're, you can't speak for 72 hours. It's not the end of the world. Just like relax. You know, you don't yeah. need to be like, oh, I'm going to kill you. Like, it's just ridiculous. But like, you do see that. Um, so like for me, no real horror stories, to be honest. I think my horror stories are more just like when we mess up some sort of comms or like I say something wrong. And it's mm-hmm. like, oh, like there's so many people who are now going to have a bad experience because of me like that. That's something that I struggle with if that ever happens, like when that happens. But yeah, I can't think of any horror stories that jump to mind. I mean, um, that's that's great to hear. Yeah, but it's just like, you just got to take it in your stride, I think. Because again, yeah. like we were saying earlier, like it comes from a passionate fan base. So if someone's upset enough to me to write like an essay breaking down why they're upset, I can guarantee you if I go and check their account, they're a big collector. They've got like a, a hundred plus moments. And actually yeah. like, it's really worth me taking the time to read through just, it and to it, you know? Just getting manifestos in the DMs every day. <laughs> I mean, admittedly, sometimes people send me, and I'm just like, mate, you, you got to shorten this down. It's like 7 a.m. Like, give me like two lines of how I can help give you. Give me the cliff notes here. Like, don't <laughs> write me a novel, buddy. But like, if I've got the time, I'll read it. Like, I, I read and respond to every tag and DM, and it, yeah, it gets a lot. Yeah, like- the Discord I spend the most time in by far is the Team Hold Discord, and someone will tag you or even mention you, and just like <laughs> you will you will pop up at some point that day and answer their question or like respond to them. I've gotten some DMs from from people, especially like when you first joined and you were in the actually Jeb Bush channel, and you and me were just going back and forth like with all that, all the memes and stuff, like people are like, dude, like, I can't believe this guy is like so much fun and like so cool and like takes the time to like interact with us. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I, I can only, I, I can't, I can't comprehend how busy you must be and how many red notifications pop up on your discord. Like that would give me a brain aneurysm. Like I could not, like whenever there's like a one there, I'm like, okay, okay, we got to get rid of this one. Like I cannot imagine just like you constantly getting rid of them and then popping back up. But like you do, you really do do such a great job at like interacting with people and not only like answering questions and stuff, but really making people feel like you're giving them your undevoted time and that they, it, like it gives them like a very like special moment. I know, like I said, talking to them, they just feel like you've really like taken the time out of your day to to interact with them and we all know like you're you're kind of a big deal so like (laughs) it's the british elephant like not everyone gets to talk to a british elephant i Um, i don't think there are many elephants in the uk to begin with i just really appreciate hearing all that i mean that's just awesome i mean that's why i do it in the day because it, it if it means a lot to someone it's worth it for everyone if that makes sense you know like yeah you can have like one person in a day who's like my experience with this platform as a collector has increased is better now because of, of this interaction. It's all worth it. It's worth the late nights. It's worth this good DMS in the middle of the night. Like, you know, if it ever gets too much, I just turn my phone off or whatever. But to be honest, it really does because like I struggle to sleep. If I've got a DM of someone, like I've got an issue access to my account or like someone's tagging me, like, I just don't understand. Can you help? Like it is difficult for me to let that go. And I think like, it's what we're here for. Like, that's how I view my role is to like be the person who can let people know this isn't, this isn't just a, a site with like a, like, it's not like a Facebook where you never know who you're actually talking to or like who's running the scene. This is like, yeah, you should know the team. You should, you know, know it's a real other. elephant on the other <laughs> side. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but like, and like, yeah, like I like to have fun. I like to joke around. And then, you know, sometimes I'll hop into one of the fan made servers. I'll chat rubbish and I'll bounce and I'll check the tags yeah. the next day. And they're like, oh, just like having a go at me. I'm like, ah, right, you got to have fun with it though, you know? But like, yeah, I, I think it's super important. We're an online company. We're, we're, trying to be not even trying to be we are bringing the blockchain to millions of people and yeah me part of the crypto nfts and blockchain is community so like we have to be the forefront of what that means and i'll be honest i don't think there's a single nft platform i might need to be fact checked on this but i don't think there's a single nft platform that has the community team of the size that we do and so that means we have to show up we have to represent i i want it that you can enter 
any NFT project and you can be like, hey, you guys want to hear about Topshop? I'll get this guy Luke in here. Send me an invite. I'll jump in. I'll tell people about Topshop. I'll let them know what's up because that's what like we got to be here. We got to be looking out for each other, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I, I do appreciate those comments. Um, makes it all worth it for sure. Yeah, no, dude, you do. You honestly do such a great job. And as someone who's like, like I said, in the team hold uh, Discord quite a bit and interacting with lots of people in there and then just seeing you pop in, like you make people's days. You definitely, you definitely like brighten people's days, mine included. Like I love, I love when I can go back and forth with someone and I know I don't have to hold back because they're going to get offended or anything like that. And I can really kind of take the piss out of them and they can do the same to me. So it's, it's always great seeing you, seeing you in there. And like, like I said, like, we know that you're, you're a busy man and for you to pop in at like 10 PM when you're probably technically like off the clock or just, it's just like, wow, like that's so great like that's that's just great to see and it's so cool that like the your passion for top shot and your passion for the community and how much you care about these people and like i said like you take your genuine time to answer their questions and interact with them on a very like deeper level not just like a, oh hi or like sending a gif or something like that like that makes such a big difference to people on a day-to-day -day basis and people see that and maybe you don't hear this enough but like Dude, you like make you are the you are the gateway drug to Top Shot. Oh so. man, that's awesome! You hit me in the feels with this. I love hearing this, to be honest. Not like love it in an arrogant sense, but I love it because you, you're right. You don't know it because you you know I jump into a Discord, answer some questions, and then I probably bounce to the next yeah. Discord, to the next Discord. You know, there's like fifty odd fan made Discords, and I don't get to every single one of them enough. But like, I do try to be like, okay, I haven't been in this talk for a while. Let's jump in. Let's take some questions. Let's see how people are doing. Um, so it's just nice to know that it isn't a waste of time in that regard because I, I'll be honest, it's not necessarily part of my job. Like no one, no yeah. one saying, Luke, go do this. I'm not getting extra pay for it. I'm, you're right. Like it's outside of my working hours, but I do think it should be something that we're doing as as a platform, as a community, you know? Yeah. Um, and at the same time, like no one in the team is ever going to come at me, but I can't believe you spent an hour in team hold instead of an hour here. Like they get it. Like, Roham, Jacob, everyone. Team Hold is a lost cause. Get out of that Discord. <laughs> they have a guy who calls himself Jeb Bush in there. Like, what is going on with that circus show? But like, that's the thing is that like you know, and I'm not I'm not trying to be negative here, but Team Hold is one of the smaller groups, right? But when yeah. I can take that, like when Mike said to me, "Hey, I'd like to get Jacob in for chat," and I tailor to Jacob, he's like, "I don't really know about him yet. I'll have to do a bit of research, but sure." Like he just know that like he sees that like Jacob is one of the busiest people on the planet, I swear. And he yeah. sees the value. No, no, no. We, we see it. Yeah. He pops up all the time on all these different things. I'm like, is there like three of him? Like how is it working? <laughs> but like, but he still will take the, the 15, 20 minutes to go onto like a small stream or whatever. And I'm not trying to yeah. say team hold isn't worth it. I'm just trying to point out like, yeah, he could, no. he could just go on ESPN. He could just do only the big highlights, but he's like, yeah. no, because community is at the core of everything that we do. So yeah. like, you know, just trying to emulate that and carry that through is definitely something that I'm, I'm trying to, well, I mean, just with. even, even you taking the time to do this, like I'm a, I am very, if team hold is like small, I am a nobody like everyone. I, I, I like, I'm, there's like some recognition with the whole like bear meme and like the, the tin foil meme and like being on ESPN and like the, the hot takes I have on Twitter and like, I don't hold back and all this stuff and all that, but like no one really knows who I am. They're like, oh, well, it's that uh that weirdo that calls himself a Republican, a person who ran for president as a Republican. I don't know if I really want to <laughs> interact with someone like that. Um, just for clarification, uh, not a Jeb Bush supporter. It is not a political statement at all. It is very much just a meme. Like that is all. And I did not think it would turn into anything like this, but at this point, like the name, the name's there and me to change it would be be a little weird so I mean, yeah you gotta remember you're talking to a guy who's called himself dumbo so like i don't yeah that's a little more like pc here. friendly though than actually Jeb Bush. i mean it, it is until you join a company where you have to be referred to and i have like support you know the support team be like hey we got we got an email come in a support ticket come in saying that dumbo told them something and i'm like oh yeah that, that's me guys yeah sorry about that um i'll clear it up what i was on about like yeah oh uh, that's so that's so funny. i like it it's good to have a little bit of fun with things and like step back and enjoy stuff you know have a lot yeah so to speak. yeah and no like interacting with the people at top shot uh in at summer league was incredible and they were so so nice and like 
I mean, one, I was shocked that anyone there had any idea who the hell I was. Because like I said, I I was so small. I had like 100 followers on Twitter, like a couple, like a couple hundred subscribers. Like I was nothing. Like I was the sideshow to Team Hole at, at the best, at the best. But like the fact that people like had an idea and were just like, yeah, we like seeing your stuff and we like it. And like, we'll interact with you even though like you're a bit, you're a bit out there. I was like, well, that's, that's cool. Like the fact that no one, no one takes everything like too seriously and that you guys can have fun and kind of, kind of like be a little more loose about that stuff is like, once again, just something that's really, really cool to see and something I feel like we don't see enough in even the NFT com communities where like people take things so seriously and it's like dude you're you're a picture of a lion like how how can you not like laugh at yourself for that like five years ago did you ever in a million years think that you would this best represented you like come on like let's be let's let's have a little fun with this and i think it's so cool that top shot like can even like make jokes that yeah like go watch it on youtube or something like that like the fact that you can joke around about that stuff and say like, hey no it is not a youtube highlight do not say that like or leave this interview or something like that like i all that stuff is like they're just little things but they all add up so much into like what top shock is as a product because it's not just these highlights it is like the community it is all these people behind the scenes that are like making it such an incredible experience with the utility the, the working with the nba like creating communities all this stuff like i mean like i said i if you would ask me five months ago what do you know what do you think about top shot i would have said what the hell is top shot and now it's like something that i can pretty confidently say has like drastically changed my life for the better and that is wild that is wild like who who can say that about some like random hobby they picked up as and like got into kind of almost as a meme like it's 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 an incredible it's an incredible thing and it it's only the beginning yeah i i think you hit it out on the head and it is it's true we we do like to have fun i think we've we've got a really good team that can strike the balance of fun but serious when we need to be and i yeah. do agree i think maybe some other projects need to like chill a little and some need to be a little more serious and you know it's a learning process we always when you push the line on these things sometimes you cross it and it's about pulling back and knowing like how to react properly um, that's why Jacob's the, the face on, on the TV and uh, on the, you know, the Jumbotron and ESPN and I, I'm the guy on the Discord, you know, that's, that's why that's like that. Um, but yeah, I, I appreciate the feedback for sure. Cool. Well, thank you so much for all your time. This has been such a great, great conversation. I'm really, really excited for people to see it and, yeah, uh, I hope this is the first of many. And once again, just thank you for your time and thank you for all that you do for Top Shot, both the company and the community. It's it's so appreciated by so so many of us. Thank you, man. It's, it's, I do I do like to hear the feedback. Just so that we, I know I'm doing the right thing, so I can point to this and say this was worth my time. I do appreciate yeah. that. Um, but it's what I'm here for. You know, happy to chat more to anyone. If anyone's watching there, like. I got questions. If it's about your account, if it's about ideas or features for the ideas for features or or the product, or you're just like confused about what Top Shot is, just reach out to me. You can get me on Twitter, you can get me on Discord. Like, don't hesitate. It's an open door policy for sure. Thank you so much, Dumbo, for taking your time to talk. I think so many people in the community will really, really glean a lot from this uh, conversation, and hopefully, it sparks a lot more conversations that you and I can discuss in the future. So. Thank you once again. It means so much. And if you're watching at home, please make sure to comment why you hate Dumbo. Please make sure to like and please make sure to subscribe. Please clap. Do you want cool. me to clap? Oh, you can, yeah, you should clap. Well, I, I feel like I've already missed it now, haven't I? It's too late now. Uh, well, okay, let's let's do it again. <laughs> <laughs> you can edit that in. I'm sure you can make yeah, that yeah. work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that would be great. <laughs>